Be sure to stick around in this video because I'm going to talk about the Madsen MG giving a good general overview of the pros and cons of the gun. I'm going to talk about this conquest game on underground in general and how I was able to clutch right at the end the 100th kill to get the 100 kill game with this gun uh, on Battlefield 5. And of course I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to maneuver around this map and so that you can maximize your potential kills in any game that you play. As always, if you do want to see the specializations for this gun, I've got the playlist there on the home page and on the playlist section where I cover four videos for all classes in Battlefield 5, giving my opinion on the best specializations. However, before we get into talking about the pros and cons of the gun, very quickly I want to say that this is the last video in the playlist of the 100 plus kill game with every single gun in Battlefield 5 video. This is officially the final and last one. So this completes every single gun in the game to have a video on the channel of. So at the end of this video, be sure to check out that playlist. Uh, and of course, I just want to make note of it because that is the final one in a challenge which I have been doing for well over a year. It has been completed, so there we go. So let's talk about the Madsen. Um, of course, if you haven't yet seen or if it hasn't yet been released, this gun is in my top five support weapons in Battlefield 5. So that's giving you your sneak peek there for the video if you haven't yet seen it. Uh, but this is in my top five weapons and I class this as being uh, a better alternative to the Bren and so this is going to be my comparison in terms of the pros and cons in what you're going to see. Of course you've got the specialization which you can choose which can increase the magazine size from 30 bullets to 40 bullets. Those 10 extra bullets on a gun like this which has a slow fire rate and hits very hard can, also, can therefore maximize the kill potential per magazine by two to three more kills. So that is absolutely huge. Uh, for this gun. Again, it hits very hard, so although it's got a slow fire rate, you can still have a quick and good time to kill with it. As you can see here, the recoil is very, very minimal. You, can, you can't even tell or can't even see any recoil when you're using the iron sight. And by the way, this iron sight is the figurehead sight, which you have to buy from the figurehead set within the armory. And so, this is actually a very unique iron sight, and the reason why I've gone for this is because the rear guard, which would, which would be blocking uh, most of the iron sight, which you can see there on the front, uh, it has been removed, whether that's intentional or is a glitch. The figurehead sight is completely unique uh, because the iron sight is the cleanest out of any of them uh, in the support class, uh, and of course, for this gun. So be sure to check that out and buy that from the armory because that can change this gun massively and it can, you know, you've already got the magazine covering a lot of the screen when you're playing normally. So going for this iron sight is going to improve your visibility a lot. But this gun also has an incredible three times scope, which is what you will see within my top five support we support guns uh, video, which is that's what I've used in that video. So I'd say either the iron sight or the three times sight are perfect. The three times sight, if you do use it, you will see is it's got a very thin reticle or very thin bar which is absolutely perfect when you pair it with this gun's high bullet velocity and therefore perfect tap fire at long range. This gun's an absolute sniper's nightmare. You can just pop heads really easily. If anyone's on a head glitch, you can just tap fire the gun in full auto mode or in semi-auto mode to improve the accuracy a little bit more and you know tap fire along with that bullet velocity to hit the target quicker and of course higher bullet velocity, meaning a higher time to kill. It's just a great all-round gun if you, of course, can factor in and play around the visibility problem which comes with the high magazine. So poor visibility is the main downfall of this gun and that is clearly because the magazine is on top of the gun and is therefore blocking what you can potentially see. However, this gun is not an aggressive gun. You can't run around and run a gun with it. It is a support weapon. It's heavier. It takes a longer time to pull the gun up, uh, to, you know, to, to pull your sight up. So you're not going to be winning one-on-one -on -one gunfights against shotguns, Type 2As and SMGs, as I always say. And so it is a gun you do want to play more defensive with. And therefore, it was absolutely suited perfectly to this game because the, the game balance uh, favoured the other team in this game. They were stronger and you could see we were constantly getting pushed back and holding at, a choke, at the choke point uh, on the stairwell uh, between C and B. So all I could do, I couldn't push forward, but this suited this gun perfectly because I was able to play defensive with it and pick, off, pick up loads of kills, which was also perfect with that high accuracy and the 40 rounds in the magazine to be able to get an extra few kills on enemies that are pushing through. And therefore, as well, because it is more of a defensive gun, 
the visibility problem is not going to be as big of a problem because you're not running and gunning and therefore having a slower reaction time because the enemy you don't see on your screen because the magazine is covering them up. Uh, and then you also see the enemy then too late and then you have a slow time to pull the gun up. So the visibility problem is less of a problem when you do play defensively with this gun as the way it was built uh, and supposed to be played with. Uh, you know, and therefore that's how you're going to benefit from this and the visibility won't be a problem because you know, you're being more careful and taking your time to be able to, to you know, spot any enemies that are on the screen. So when we now go in and talk about this game in particular, you know, I've already said the enemy had a greater uh, and stronger team uh, and we were constantly getting pushed back. I couldn't even push through to even get a flank and get behind all the enemies to obviously unleash those 40 rounds uh, behind the enemies. So that's all you're going to really be seeing in this game is more of a defensive play style uh, and how I am you know, maximizing my kills still with that, making the game last as long as possible by ensuring that the other team doesn't push through and capture all three flags so that the tickets from our side drain down really quick um, and you know that's essentially all you're going to see in this gameplay there's nothing majorly tactical in terms of uh, power positions uh, or movement but what i can give you some tips on of course is where you should be positioning yourself when you're in this sort of choke point uh, position because i will tell you time after time after time you know every single player on the enemy team who are using zks or smgs they're always trying to pop smokes uh, underneath the tunnels uh, and try and flank around the back coming into the building that's in front of me there and shooting you in the back everyone sh shooting everyone in the back who are of course watching the staircases uh, and looking out the main windows if you are going to stay in that building watching the windows like you have seen me do for the majority of the start of this video then you always need to be checking behind yourself behind your back every 10 to 20 seconds you know, even five seconds to make sure no enemies have pushed behind because you can't trust your teammates uh, in this game or even on underground because your teammates literally won't even watch the staircases for you. They won't watch anything. So you got you can't rely on your teammates uh, in this. You've got to look back. Um, and of course, you can see here, I have pushed out from that building now because the enemies have pushed further in than they did at the start of the video when I was more comfortable and felt more safe to stay in that building near the windows. So I have pushed out the back here and the line I'm holding here now is, is you know, behind this tram effectively, using it as cover. So one, I can kill the enemies that are inside the building coming up from the staircases on both the left and the right. But I'm also sat just behind um, the flank route that the enemies are trying to use, uh, which is of course just behind me uh, coming from underneath the underground, uh, from the under, under the tunnels basically. So, you know, they, they might come out from those tunnels and turn around and run into the building, uh, but they're not going to be able to shoot me in the back because I'm sat further back than they are already, uh, which means I can kill them and shoot them in the back if they miss me. So that is why my position in there uh, is like that. Now here I have dropped back a bit further because the enemies pushed in a bit more. Of course, I couldn't hold my position because I'm playing a gun which is not good in close quarters and close range and the enemies are pushing through in big groups, uh, you know, four or five in at least a squad uh, each. So there's no way I'm going to be able to outgun all of them. So the only thing I can do with the majority of people in this game mode, uh, or rather this map, playing close quarters, high time to kill aggressive weapons, is to move away, move further away like I have done here, play at my gun's effective range, being medium to long range, uh, and therefore as well, the enemy's uh, gun's effective range is close range, not medium to long range. So any enemy I can see or gunfight I get into, the chances are I'm going to be able to win that. And the enemy's accuracy is going to be incredibly low because they're using SMGs, etc, etc. And I'm playing with a high accuracy gun, which is good for those medium to long ranges. So that's why I'm dropping off and playing that defensive style that this, gate, that this gun um, obviously promotes. And then lastly, of course, as you can see here, as we do fall back and then kill off the main pushing enemies, we can then start to push back in and take some ground back uh, and take up those other positions which I had previously taken up before. So it's not constantly dropping back, it's kind of a tug of war, sort of like breakthrough, um, you know, trying to just hold that line and push forward whenever we can. But yeah, that pretty much covers it for this game, for this video. Um, so yeah, it, is, it has been the last one in the 100 plus killer games uh, playlist. I have got another 5 to 10 uh, you know, 100 plus games, some really, really good ones uh, with guns, which I have already done, which will be uploading. So that's not going to be, be the end of these 100 plus kill games if you do enjoy these types of videos. Um, but that is the challenge for 100 plus kill game 
maps with every gun in the game uh, done. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed, and yeah, I'll let you watch the final minute of this video, and I will see you on the next one. Choke.